mind. I'm trying to sleep. At last, the doors opened and out chuffed a dirty, grimy steam truck. So you're the little puffer that's broken down. That would be vintage steam truck, snapped Elizabeth. And I haven't much time to get to your coupling rods. The driver was concerned. Elizabeth was making awful grinding sounds. She's not built for hills, he said anxiously. You're losing steam, he called. Just catching my breath, Elizabeth chuffed. And finally she made it. When Elizabeth returned with Thomas's coupling rods, she was pleased with herself. And next time don't be so careless, she scolded. He wanted to tell him how rude Elizabeth had been when she rolled up. Oh, it's you, said Elizabeth, looking down at Sir Topham Hatt. Have you learned to drive properly yet? My first truck. I thought you had been lost. They were old friends. Then Elizabeth told Sir Topham Hatt how she'd been left in the shed for years. Sir Topham Hatt was so pleased Elizabeth had been found. And soon Elizabeth had a rich, dark color and gleaming coachworks. I knew, said Elizabeth even more proudly. She did look grand. The next morning, Elizabeth brought plenty of coal. Oh, my dear, Elizabeth chuffed to Percy. It looks like Jack Frost really got you. It takes too much of your time, said Sir Topham Hatt. Elizabeth, the quarry truck, thought cleaning up the line was ridiculous. What a waste of time, she sniffed. Harder than ever, but time was running out. The next day, Rusty had a very clever idea. Elizabeth stopped. Well, I couldn't possibly help you. I'm a quarry truck. I am a special kind of truck, protested Elizabeth. I can haul, said Elizabeth. Well, of course I can pull. Well, of course, said Elizabeth proudly. Elizabeth was as good as her word. She hauled rubbish and pulled branches from the line. She helped remove a fallen sycamore tree from the cattle creek. I know, said Elizabeth proudly. And well done, Elizabeth. The farmer's prize bull. This time, Duncan whistled as loud and... Stop that nonsense, Duncan, Elizabeth called. Duncan carried on cheerfully down the track. Elizabeth pulled into the fitter's yard with Thomas's snowplow. Nonsense, steamed Elizabeth. You can't be a reliable engine if you can't get through the snow. From Hat talking to Elizabeth. The Sodor Cake Factory is snowed in. Elizabeth knows those roads well. She's very reliable. I'm not reliable enough, Elizabeth chuffed. Now, She's struggling to stay on the road. Her wheels did not like the slippery ice at all. That's counting on me. I mustn't be late. She... Suddenly, she never applied the brakes. Elizabeth slid out of control into a deep snowdrift. Poor... Tom... Parents rescued her in no time. We will have... better. <laughs> and puffed as fast as he could. Reached the docks just in time. So it was safe and well. We'll get you a... Thomas, said Elizabeth. You and I are both reliable. Tom... He didn't have to wait long. I can take you as far as the flour mill, she boomed. He climbed onto Elizabeth's wagon. He didn't see Elizabeth waiting there. Or the tuba player on her flatbed. Elizabeth took the tuba player all the way to the mill. There you are, young man, she puffed. Trevor will take you from here. 
Trevor chugs slowly down the lane. Then Emily came across a fallen water tower. It had crashed onto her line. Elizabeth was helping the workmen push the tower off the track. The tower was very heavy. Not if you ask like that, sniffed Elizabeth crossly. But Elizabeth didn't listen. She simply went back to work. But the more she blew her whistle, the slower Elizabeth seemed to go. Emily complained about Elizabeth. She won't do a thing I tell her. And the baby calves still didn't have a roof over their heads. Elizabeth smiled. Why, certainly, she puffed. I'll get your track cleared in no time. With all her puff, the tower was heavy. But with a mighty heave, the track was clear. Later, Emily had to wait for Elizabeth at a crossing. Where's this new engine, honked Elizabeth grandly. Oh, sniffed Elizabeth. Aren't you going to introduce me to your new friend? But Emily didn't want anything more to do with Whiff. When Thomas arrived at Maithwaite, Elizabeth was making a delivery. How jolly, steamed Elizabeth. Next stop, Marin Station, Thomas tooted. Thomas felt very grand as he steamed past Elizabeth. Be careful with that tall boat, she hooted. It's a very blustery day. But Thomas felt far too important to take any notice. Slow down, cried Elizabeth. But it was too late. Many railway tracks that the little narrow gauge engines run on. Air and engine parade to begin. Madge sparkled and shone as she proudly pulled the brass band. You both and the biggest carnival Sodor had ever seen.